Just the faint, you know, glimmer of hope that there might be some appetite for sustainable housing, you know, and transport. Well, I think uh, the fact that we we have a green building index uh, is a good thing, and the fact that this was not a government initiative, this was a private sector initiative, is even better, I think. So, uh, but you know what developers are like, they're, they're kind of weathered to a certain cultural way of thinking, and that's going to be hard, but I think that will come. Um, with transport... <laughs> I don't know. There are a bunch of us, uh, we're experimenting. We've actually just ordered a, a bunch of electric bicycles from China. Uh, and we're going to try and start commuting. I know we talked about this. Um, try and try start using bicycles a bit more. Uh, but I, I'm quite scared. <laughs> but you know, look at Singapore. Singapore, you can cycle anywhere, and, and not only are they the, you know, one of the greenest cities on the planet, they're making it even greener. So they've gone from a, a what, garden city to a city in a garden. I mean, what a brilliant concept. And in fact, they're going to try and go later for a city in a rainforest, which is a mind-blowing concept. So, you know, can human beings exist in an urban setting along with a kind of rainforesty ecosystem. I mean, wow. That would be really cool if they can pull it off. It, it is actually possible to buy a sport in Parliament. Sorry, it is actually you possible. Do. I, yeah, I it is possible to yeah. to cycle in Canada. Yeah, you've done it for many years. I've I've never I don't have never had a car and uh, I've always cycled ever since my first job, but that was that was before LDP became LDP. <laughs> but because I did start then, you know, you sort of develop this consciousness about what, how you are, where you are on a bike. So I think it's I, I'm I'm comfortable with it. But I think for a lot of new people, new bikers will be you know, kind of difficult. Um, it is. Uh, it's really scary because the cars. It's not a bike friendly road. We don't have bike friendly highways. No, you know, I was actually cycling, uh, I cycled in uh, Singapore before and I, f I thought it was much scary in Singapore at that one time because, because the buses don't look out for cyclists <laughs> and they, yeah, and you're, you're cycling on the curbside and they pull in and out and they, they don't care about you. So, yeah, but, what was I going to say? I forgot. I think, uh, uh, oh, just a quick comment to, to what Steve said. It's like we, we have, Singapore is great, if, you know, they, they have this vision. We're going to be a, a city in a rainforest. We don't have visions like that. So we, we, we're not thinking of what outcome we want and so working backwards or what, what we need to put in place to have that outcome. We're just, we're, we're not thinking about what we want. You know? Yeah, we're not dreaming. I mean, one yeah. of the things that I say is that when Martin Luther, when Martin Luther King you know, said his iconic kind of statement, he didn't say, I have a critique of a really important question, or I have a proposal, or I have a complaint. He didn't say that. He said, I have a dream, and we are really lacking dreamers. We need, we need more dreamers. On that note, uh, thank you very much. Okay, could you make it really short? Thank you. Okay, short question, but probably long answer, <laughs> sorry. My question is, for the 21st century, all the movements are starting to change. The environmental movement has changed their perspective in how they pursue people to be on board of the, the movement. So, the question I'm asking is, for the 21st century, for the next generation is, what should we ask? What is the question to ask to help this change and help this movement hop on board uh, next year, the next year. Because people in the environment movement, like uh, I heard a, a talk by some guy in the UK, he says that, that they have been hopping on this nightmare for too long already. They said that we cannot paint the picture of the future grim and dark. And because the grimness actually makes people scared. And when they're scared, they can't do anything. Yeah, so they're starting to, to ask the question about a brighter future. Even Melinda Gates, she's talking about 
taking Coke's brilliant advertisement programs in helping to fight the battle against polio. So what do we as the 21st century citizens and what do the youth say, what should we ask to get these movements on board? What should we ask to get new ideas and new innovations and a new whole mind-blowing way of figuring things out? Do you have a suggestion? Well, that's why I'm asking. <laughs> You're the young one. <laughs> okay, I think the question to ask is why not? You know, a lot of people are going to say things that it's impossible, things that there's, um, you know, probably not, not. Uh, I don't know what is the question to ask actually, but I think it's good to ask why not. You know, if things doesn't happen, you just ask why not. You know, and then and then you probably get some inspiration. That's how we get our inspiration. We always ask why not. Any other questions, Sumei or Steve, that you think we could be asking to kind of? You know, push the environmental movement up to the next gear. Yeah, I think positive, uh, positive is better than negative. I think that, that's kind of what I was saying about environmentalism is that you know saying, hey, yeah, no, no, don't do this, don't do that. Um, so, so messaging yeah, is quite good, but I, we need more than messaging. We need kind of uh, slippery, slippery kind of direction things. So just like uh, the environmental movement, uh, you know. Uh, relies on 